All right, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with a data log in our AEM log software. So I'm gonna be taking a data log from a dyno run and I'm gonna be showing you what you need to do when you open up the log and how to kind of read the data in the log and compare it and going back into our AEM Pro for our calibration file. So I'll show you how to make some fuel changes, what you need to be looking for for your ignition timing. This particular example is a turbocharged engine. So I'm gonna be showing you what you need to evaluate in the log to see how the closed loop control is gonna be performing, as well as taking a look at air fuel and taking a look at air injector duty cycles. So we're gonna be seeing all of that in the video so you have a better idea how to work with your AEM log software. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at a data logging example from a high boost dyno pool with a turbocharged engine. And we're gonna be taking a look also at the, the calibration file from that dyno pool. And we'll be able to go through and kind of get an evaluation process of working with our AEM log, what we should be looking for, and then what kind of changes we could make to our calibration file based on what that log is showing us. So this is really to give you kind of a workflow overview of how we're gonna be moving from our AEM Pro into our AEM log, and then moving back in here to our AEM Pro again to make our changes. So this is the tune file that I have open here. I'm gonna be opening the data log from this tune file at a high boost pool. Looking here, I have a 20 P, 28 PSI pool. This was a Honda B-Series turbocharged engine on race gas. I think it was on Q16. So we find here we have options here for a number of plots. I'm gonna be selecting three plots. I'm gonna be going here, engine speed, engine load, and O2 number one. I'll click draw. Now we can find that we have three of these plotted here in our window. First thing I'm gonna do, jumping into my second plot, I'll go here, right click, edit. I'm gonna be changing the scale here for my boost pressure. You can see it's gonna be cutting it off. Green is gonna be showing my, my manifold pressure. Let's jump here into engine load, and I'm gonna be changing this now from zero PSI. Let's just change this to 30 PSI and click close. And now we're gonna find it's gonna be plotting our scale here between zero, or I'm sorry, between negative 14.7, up to 30 pounds of boost. And then we'll find here engine RPM. We could probably optimize this as well if we right click, go into edit here and go and change this. Let's just say change this to 9,000, click close. Now we can find that's gonna plot this a little bit nicer. So looking at our basic data here, we find we have our engine speed going up here to the high RPM to roughly 7,600. And it looks like I was taking the, uh, the boost pressure up here to roughly 27, 27.3, 27.7. So roughly 28 pounds of boost. And we can find here that the air fuel was showing 11.3, 11.4, showing pretty, uh, pretty decent air fuel levels. The air fuel is pretty flat. So depending on where my load's at, I kind of pan through my data log as I'm evaluating the data here. I pan through and see what was going on here. So where my air fuel was showing me about 14.0, I was about three pounds of boost, about 4,200 RPM. That's okay. If we 